this was also like one question in the Slack. People were asking like, uh, do people use Markdown and or book down and push uh, it to the main repo? Uh, or do we, because like we are using a mix between like PowerPoint, uh, displaying with a studio, but like, like I will do not pushing uh, it to the GitHub. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people were discussing like, what should we do to improve people uh, using Git and stuff like that. So if you have ID, uh, if you have trouble with that, we can, John said he will do a small video about it. We can, we can think about something like to help people about that, but if, if you have trouble, like feel free to set it in the Slack and a uh, lot of there's, people can help. Uh, there's a quite few videos uh, explaining how to do that, even in, in the old way, like pushing manually. Yeah. From, yeah, like with the arrow up and down within the GitHub uh, uh, viewer pane like there, uh, or using, um, use this? Use this. Yeah, yeah use this. But I, 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 I know the old way, so I do the old way. A uh, lot of time I fell, but it's no big deal. Like this is one stuff that uh, if someone is afraid of, it's no big deal if you fail with, GIS, uh, with JIT. Who cares? This is just like uh, um, the way like the, it is um, made, make you like basically like if you fail, we can revert, we can like do a bunch of stuff. So this is, and you know what? I felt a lot of time. <laughs> so that's it. Okay. I guess we should start, even if we are just three. And then people can join later, I hope, because I think it's an important chapter. Uh, so we'll start sharing my screen. Hope I'm not failing this one too. Not uh, this one. This, I would like to share this one. I will share my screen and hopefully it will work. Uh, all screen. Can I do all screen? On your screen, yes. Hello. Hello. Uh, yeah. Is it good? Wait a bit. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. So chapter nine, simple normal regression. It's a big chapter. Uh, I will try to be as clear as I can. The learning objectives are uh, build a simple linear regression model, interpret appropriate real model, simulate posterior model of the regression parameters. We'll define a bit more like the regression parameters later. Utilize the simulation we have done to build posterior understanding, like more like analysis stuff and um, of the relationship between a, resp I will, a response Y and the predictor X I will define this term a bit after and build a posterior predictive model of Y. Uh, first, I will say congrats to everyone. We are like now at the beginning of unit three. So I guess we are like graduated for Bayesian probabilities for babies and we can go further. Uh, so new term. Why uh, it's something that we want to understand, which we call the response variable. We'll have a toy example here, which will be like uh, bike sharing services. And we will try to understand how many bike uh, ride, uh, ride share uh, uh, will be done per day. And to predict that, we'll have like a set of predictors. Here we'll just have one, one X, which will be the temperature of the day. Uh, first, like the author also introduced two new terms, like the regression, like on the title, which is basically when we want to analyze quantit a quantitative response, let's say, for example, the number of uh, bike rented, or when we want, and you have another like uh, term that's called classification, is when we want to analyze categorical, categorical response. Let's say, um, uh, we want to predict if people want soda and what kind of soda, Sprite, Coca-Cola, whatever, you know, high impact stuff. Um, that, that's it. Uh, and so the first, the, this chapter will be on regression and we will do a normal regression model. 
The next one will be like also on this normal regression model. Then we'll move a bit to classification, then went back to regression. Uh, what we want to model currently is the number of rides per day. If you think about the problem, a Poisson model makes more sense because it's a count of an event. But here, uh, according to the authors, it's the, when we when you plot the data, when we you know a bit the data, it more look like a bell curve. So it's it should be a normal model. Anyway, as as a fact, a lot of time when you want to predict the count, all all the textbook will tell you like it's uh, it's a Poisson model. But a lot of time uh, you shouldn't do it because like a lot of time when you are counting something, if you have a lot of zero, for example, and very uh, like you said, like you have a lot of zero and like an, um, a value that is very far from the mean, uh, a Poisson distribution will not be able to, to do that. Uh, because like the Poisson distribution, the mean should be equal to the variance because you just have one parameter which is the rate lambda. And if you have like, for example, a strong variation, you will have to adapt the Poisson model. You will probably, I think this is on the book um, also later. So no big, no, ju just uh, I close the, the comment and go back to the normal model. So the normal model will be defined like that. So we want to pre um, predict the uh, right pair there, which will be a Y, uh, which will take like a normal model that will take two parameters, mu and sigma. Uh, and then the mu will be like, oh, I like uh, n here, like this, it should be a hand. Mu will also be defined by a normal model that take a theta and two as parameters. And we'll also like, because before we haven't defined it, the sigma here, now we'll define it. Uh, so this is why we bring a predictors. Like before, we just, we just know why. And we, we are predicting an average um, ridership with an average temperature, with just an average ridership without information. No, can we do better if we add the temperature? The temperature will be in Fahrenheit. Is it good? Okay, I move on. Just say uh, loudly if it's not. Fahrenheit, you can tell it was written by an American. I don't think anyone else. Yeah. I mean, here Fahrenheit have a, a little interest more than just being in America. Yeah, because the ride share service is in Washington, D.C. Okay. So now we'll have to introduce, we're building the regression model. The regression model will be like composed by two models, the data model and the prior model. That's mean like for every kind of day, every day we will have like the day will be Y. We'll have like y1, y2, y n, etc. etc. We'll get an average temperature of the day, which will be x1, x2, etc. etc. This all make sense. Um, we have prior knowledge that suggests a positive linear, linear, uh, linear relationship between ridership and temperature, at least in DC, I think. So when the, it gets warmer, more people uh, use bike share services. Uh, I will say, like, I imagine if it's get too warm, they'll probably stop, but I guess this is never too warm. Uh, we are now moving away from just the idea of having a global mean, but now we are also having a local mean. That's the global mean was mu, and the local mean will be mu i, which is will be the mean, uh, the, this mean, like, the, the mean we are trying to estimate. This is the average uh, mean of um, a ridership at one time. And this u, a mu y, will be uh, explained by uh, the linear equation you see below, which will, will take two new parameters, which will be beta, uh, beta uh, zero and beta y. Beta zero is usually like the intercept coefficient, which is hard to interpret when you are you use zero degree in Fahrenheit. I don't know, it must be very, very, very cold. And uh, the beta one is usually like if you just choose one predictor, it's called the slope. But it's all the temperature affects um, the change of ridership. If we increase the temperatures, 
by Y units, we are increasing the ridership by a certain numbers. Okay, I think this is like fairly usual stuff. Uh, maybe like you, everyone have seen like this kind of equation before, I assume. Uh, right. It's a bit different than the classic one because we don't uh, need to verify the normal distribution of the error. But uh, because on classical like uh, fre frequency st um, statistics, so we don't have this term here in the equation. That's maybe like sometimes you have seen. Okay, so now we are using like this uh, new uh, linear model inside of our previous data model. So this is why why uh, will be uh, given by beta O, beta one, and sigma. Uh, oh yes, uh, and all the, um, the the little uh, in the mean like this is independent. Like I think it's a bit far-fetched hypothesis, but okay. Let, let's assume like accounting for average temperatures. Uh, this is what I read before. Accounting for x, y for one day is independent for another day. I'm not sure it's exactly right, but let's say it is. And it's follow a normal distribution uh, of mu the one day sigma square with uh, the linear model defined after. Uh, so this is important because now we are switching of the average. Like I have said, this is very important to understand. Like we are switching for like trying to predict the global mean mu of the number of ridership to a local mean, which will depend on the temperature. Okay, so normal regression assumption, I have already said, said one, the structure of the data, we have an independent, uh, Y for one day is independent for another day, accounting for X. The structure of the relationship Y can be write as a linear function. I have a, like a failure on my uh, LaTeX here. And the structure of the variability at any time of X will vary normally. This is why like uh, the, the normal uh, sign here. I want new with a consistent standard deviation. That's mean like we don't, uh, uh, the standard deviation like every day with various temperature will not change. Like I think also like this is a strong hypothesis, but like you can imagine like you have less standard deviation with some uh, a relationship with the temperatures. But let's say this is our assumption here. So for specifying the prior, we are gonna use, I, I'm trying to use like meme, see? So we are gonna use like a new package. We will use like a bunch of new package at the end of the, um, of this talk, uh, this, I have this, not this talk, this, uh, this meeting, I have, I have made a, a summary of all the stuff that we, uh, the new package and the new function. So it makes stuff a bit easier, I think. So we are using s RRM, which stands for Applied Regression Model, which is a package that's built on RSTAN and uh, for a regression model. Okay, now um, I have a small quiz. So see, I highlighted it. I improved <laughs> the way. So given this equation here, what do you think are our parameters? Uh, if I can remember the reading, it was uh, B0. I can, I can maybe improve it. Like, is it better? Oh, yeah, I mean, basically, if I can remember the reading, I think it was like um, B0, B1, and what I thought was the error term, which it may not be an error term, maybe the standard deviation. Yeah, so I think, let's check. Da -da -da. You're right. <laughs> Good job. So it was, yeah. Uh, so now we have like these three new parameters where before we just have like uh, new. Uh, the first uh, assumption, I think this one is a fair assumption, this parameter are independent. So that's mean like basically, oh, I, this is an error. I also I have two errors to correct, like B0, uh, it's B1 here. That's mean like uh, the slope didn't depend on the intercept. I think this is a fair like, uh, assumption. Uh, and then to define the slope, it will, will use a normal distribution of, I mean, and a standard deviation. 
like for example, this is, they are not like defined. This is just like we are just posing the equation. And for the B1, which is an error here, it will be like the normal uh, distribution of some mean and some standard deviation. And for SD, which is an error also here. Uh, oh no, sorry, for sig, uh, no, no, it's good. Like all of these new parameter, M0, M1, SO, and S1, they are parameter of parameters because like we are using them to estimate other parameters. So they are called hyper parameters. See how smart we are. So when you have parameter of parameters, you call them hyper parameters. Because what we are trying to estimate is these three terms. Uh, so we can like uh, know a lot of stuff about right share. And then for sigma, uh, this is like, I no idea why they put a dot after here. Like this is, this is a small dot. So I assume it's because like an exponential cannot be zero. Or it will be very weird. Or it will be infinite, I think. So this is why maybe, maybe, maybe it's need like every like real not zero. I don't know why they put this small dot. They didn't explain. So if you have an, yeah. an idea, no, I'm, I think. I'm, I'm not sure either, to be honest with you. <laughs> but they, they probably thought they got to the end of a sentence. Uh, no, because like I have checked and repeated that number. <laughs> it was too consistent to be an error. Uh, at, so we'll define like, uh, so sigma need to be positive because it's a, uh, it's a variation. A variation cannot be negative. Like it's, it's need to be like some, or you don't have variation. So this is why they use an exponential um, um, low. And that's it. So let's put that together. They could have used gamma also. There's other, other like uh, positive. Um, but by default, like the Airstan RRM package, we we'll use, we we'll recommend to use exponential for this uh, standard deviation parameters. So that's also one reason they use it. Okay, let's write our model a bit more. So now, we have we we have like uh, our y's depending of these three parameters. That's uh, that's we define everything. So this is like an uh, every stuff inside the model is defined except like M O M one S one and S two, and we have to set up prior of it. Uh, it seems like sometimes a bit odd, but you need to build it uh, every uh, one step at a time. So. First, you start by saying if y is discrete or continuous. Like if it's discrete, you will probably not use a normal distribution, another one. And you, you, you use like a distribution that fits the model of the data you have. Then like according, like currently, like if for example, it was a, if we have picked a, a portion distribution, we'll have a rate. So instead of mu y and sigma, we will have to find a way to rewrite a rate as another uh, function of the predictors. But here we are starting easy with like a normal distribution. So we'll like just fit two normal distribution um, for this, uh, this two term, the slope and the intercept. Still, I have failed my copy past. Uh, I will say like you could also use a uniform model if you are like very blind. Like you want a huge, uh, very flat priors. Uh, it's also an option. And then you need to identify what's uh, the UGNO parameter in our model. And currently it's B0, B1. I mean, it's M0, M1, and, uh, and L. And um, the standard uh, deviation for every um, parameter. So the, we need to like now identify the hyper parameters. Is it good? Yes, yes. Yep. Doo -doo. Now that's what we are gonna do. We are turning the, the prior model for regression parameters. So this is like the parameters we need. Uh, so I have like, see, this is the A. I try like to put like, how do they do it with the link with the equation? So on an average day, I still have this error here. On the average day, uh, which mean like 60 to 70 degrees per night in DC, you have something between 3,000 uh, and uh, 7,000 riders with a mean of around 5,000. Uh, so 
for that's mean like here this is the only trick here see we have a small c here that's mean of instead taking the slope they center the data instead of having like the data like uh uh which will like the, the intercept will um uh, cross the y uh axis uh on x zero uh it's the data is centered so it will be at the middle of the distribution of the data is it good if not i can bring the book and the the small uh small graph maybe maybe i should do that now is it good or not uh yeah i think it's okay but i mean the intercept okay. it really necessarily started at, at the, zero I, 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 I'm, I wasn't sure and I didn't understand it why they put, pick 100 here and square it. To me, it seems a bit high, but okay. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, a big number, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I, I, this, I, this, oh, I no, didn't no. understand. I th isn't, that, isn't that something to do with the variation? Yeah, yeah, it's variation. I don't know. I, I think this, oh, at least they put up, this is prior, so you can. But that's mean a very, very strong variation. And that's mean that sometimes you probably have negative uh, readership. Because like mm -hmm. one, uh, 100 squared is a lot. <laughs> and well, that's, anyway, that's very uh, wide prior, I will say. The second one is a bit more easy, at least. Uh, so like for every one degree increase, you get uh, more than 100 riders, more or less 80. So it can be 20 or it can be 180. So at least this prior is, is a bit smaller. So we have like around, around 100 riders. This is like our prior, I mean, this is a prior. We, we obviously it will change. Um, this is just like, I don't know, like maybe you ask like the guy who is running like these companies and he said like, oh, well, more or less we have that um so you use it the sigma with the exponential is a bit tricky like we are using an equation with another fourth here equation uh from chapter five which state like for the exponential model the the the, the um mean of well let's say the experience of the standard deviation is one divided by the the term and we know from C that at any given temperatures, it can vary uh, with a standard deviation of around 100, 200, 1,250 rides. So we just know like the standard deviation should be 100, around 100, this, 1,250. And we just like revert the equation to get like this 0 0.0008 with the dots. <laughs> Maybe they just copy pasted like me. And anyway, I was bothered by this dot. So it is good to simulate priors and see what what it produce. Um, we are not doing it now, but it will uh, it will come back with Aston RM package later. So just like keep in mind, uh, I have a slide about that. So it's good like to simulate those priors. And I think like if you simulate those priors, you will see like maybe the standard deviation of the intercept centered intercept is a may maybe like give you too much viability i don't know okay moving on now we are doing the simulation so let's say like we have like set up our data model set up our priors now we can run a simulation before running the simulation like they just protect the data so this is like just like the, uh, you call like the data is inside the package and you call ggplot, and this is classic ggplot. Uh, nothing, nothing stunning. Uh, well, you can also like do the math, but as I said, like it's it's bringing you a triple integral in the denominators. I didn't even wanted to try to write it in LaTeX. Like this was madness. Uh, I will like maybe bring it like uh, so bias rules, but. Yes, rules, books, it's on nine. I will show you the madness okay. still. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Posterior simulation. 
it's loading. So this is it, see? Oh, no. This is it. So the, oh. And that's why we have computers. Ah, stop moving. <laughs> this is this one. So basically like you want to uh, take into account, like you are basically having a bunch of um, uh, posterior density function that you are multiplying, then submit to weight them. And this is why you have like this huge triple integral uh, with a lot of um, uh, posterior density function for every term. So this is very complicated to do. I don't mind it not doing it. So you can use a uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo, which gladly I will do. The author like used it too. Uh, so there was one simulation which was done with R stand RM with the stand GLM uh, function. So how does it, does it work? Like first you need to enter like the data information. You are the, the so this, the data is taking like the bike object. Uh, then you write the equation uh, of what you want, like the Y versus X. So Y is ride and X is temperature field in the data sets. I was like unsure if we are using the same formula syntax that the base, base R or is it like their own custom? So I don't know. That's uh, why I like. No, I, think, I think that's, yeah, the regular one, yeah. So this is like the formula, the, the same formula syntax, but yeah. that makes stuff easier for people who know it. Yeah. Then uh, the family we are setting up, like this is a Gaussian because we assume normal data. This is uh, what we are like uh, doing. Uh, this is all the, this is the data model we, we pick it. Then we are gonna uh, insert our prior. So the prior intercept, uh, see like this normal, this is like the, the write it differently, like, uh, I don't think this is an R function. This is probably like a, a R stand or R stand RM function. This is different than R norm. Uh, then the prior is setting up. I think this is like the R stand version. So we are following like the R stand um, syntaxes. This may be like complicated a bit like on stuff. So just like uh, be careful when you are using it. Uh, the syntaxes look like the R stand one. So for normal, you write normal, not norm, not like uh, other way. So, uh, and then uh, this is like the prior for the one of the prior for like the um, the slope, which uh, beta be, each name is beta um, one. And then we are like the, they call it auxiliary, uh, the hooks here. Uh, I. I have not exactly understand why they call it the distinction between like effect and auxiliary in the book. Maybe like if someone understand it, but it's used also in the broom mixed package, this terminology, but the author not really introduce it. And then this is like the classical MCMC information, which is like how many chain are we gonna run? How many iteration and burning phase are we gonna do? So here like we are gonna do 5,000 uh, burning on the burning phase and five will keep 5,000. And this is just how you set the seed to uh, ensure like you will get the same re results. Okay, so this was like the Erston RM version. Now this is like the uh, classical Erston version. So first to do the classical version, you need to set up the model for Stan, which is usually divided on data, parameters and model. The data, uh, so just, we already like uh, have been through it, but it's worth like maybe repeating it. So uh, like the number, this is like the number of um, iteration we get. It's obviously pos positive and cannot be lower of zero. And then you have like a vector of n. This is like, if you remember like this basically is, uh, I will go back to the data model if I can. This is another way of writing this. See, we have n couple, uh, we have n data pair of it. So let's go back to the posterior simulation. I hope it's not too quick, sorry if it is. So this is basically a vector of length n of value of y, and this is basically a vector of length n of 
uh, which is air would be like temperature. And um, this is like, uh, because like every line is probably compiled. So this is like this, this is the end of the line, the semicolon. Then the parameter is defined. The beta take the value of a real, beta zero take the value of zero, uh, of a real, beta one take the a real, and uh, sigma obviously cannot be lower to zero because uh, variation makes no sense. This was the parameter. Then we define the model, and everything was defined before. So this is the way it works. Like it's 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 step by step. It, if Stan will probably crash if he doesn't know something. Like the beta one was defined here, the beta uh, beta zero was defined here, extra extra, and then we plug it all uh, um, the 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 prior. But see here, it's not centered. This is like uh, uh, this is uh, it's beta zero, it's not beta zero centered. This is like all of that, like this little little trick. Oh, I don't know how to call it. Like if you don't know, like for Estan RM will want centered version and Airstan will don't want, you can be tricked by that. So I think this this mm. is a lot of, I don't know, I would call that like some stuff like you should be careful of. And then after like you call, this is just classical air and you are calling the, I should have like writing it, the air sta, the stand function from the Airstan where you pick up the model you have defined here with like the data structure. See, this is also the, uh, write it a bit differently. Instead of working with a data frame, you are working with a list where we, you define n as the number of row of the data sets, and then y and x as the vector of the data. This is like another way, like um, that's something like you should, when you should switch between like package and that can like, you know, give you some trouble. Um, so, you know, read the Freaking documentation, if I'm polite, <laughs> can be difficult. I, I, I can see myself like spending the on little stuff like that. Anyway, and then after the same idea of the uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo. Okay, the model will run uh, and you will get like 5,000 um, uh, times four number of chain. Uh, Airstan RM will change a bit the name. So, Beta uh, zero will become the intercept, uh, and I don't. I think, but I'm not sure that they're changing it for uh, beta zero and not beta zero centered. And beta uh, the beta uh, one, which is like the the slope, will become the temperature field, and stigma will still say stigma. Okay. Now, like another quiz: What do we need to check uh, uh, after the stimulation? Uh, to see if everything's gonna go well. I will. It's fine if you don't know, we'll check you like, so I can see your face. It's better. It was um, some, uh, there were some pictures that were generated that you're supposed to check the pictures. From what I remember reading. Yeah, the pictures. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay, I have not printed the picture. It's no, no big deal if you don't know, like it's, uh, we need like, I think this is something that you need to repeat to know um, I will have I will have to write it for myself also, you know, in my my little book of notes uh, to because I probably forget it. But yeah, I will I will write it for you here. So let me we go back to that here. So we can check the effective sample size with the NF ratio function, mm -hmm. which came. I will I will list all the function after. Which is basically like uh, because a Markov Monte Carlo chain is not uh, independent, like one measure came from the previous one. We want, you want as much as, if I remember correctly, it says uh, you want as much as uh, many uh, observations that are independent. And I think this is what the NF ratio calculated. Then you are the R at. Uh, function that uh, calculate also like the variation between all the chain and the in uh, ratio between the variation between all the chain and in between the chain. If you have trouble, you can check like the MCMC chapter under the hood. So basically like uh, I can go back to the bias rules maybe. Oh, to show them to you. 
9, posterior prediction. No, it's before, sorry, posterior stimulation. So this is it. Like basically, you are comparing like, oops, here. Uh, oh, so yeah. So basically, like you, the, the, the hair heart is a way of summing up the graphical variation. You see it. It's basically like all the variation in all the chain divided by the variation between the chain. I think it's something like that. I will have to write it and set it. And then you have the, also like. You have these two functions, the MC and MC trace, which trace that. And you have to check like they do not, uh, you don't, they are not like either like trending in some direction. So that means like they will not like being stationary. So here they are stationary, like they're all flat. Even if they move a lot, which is what you want. Uh, the all the chain are like kind of the same places and they are like flat. And also like you do not have like holes and stuff like that. Uh, they are called like trace, but uh, I think like other people can call them like fuzzy mustache, which I like more. Yeah, that's quite good. Yeah. So uh, this is like or, the. So or, or, they like, could, or, or they could be furry caterpillars. Yeah, or fuzzy caterpillars. Like whatever makes you be feel better, like to remember them. I like fuzzy mustache. So this is our, but the real name is trace plots. And you can also overlay the density of each chain. So you can check if. Every chain is estimate you the correct uh, posterior density you want, and as you see here, this is good. So we're good with all the check. Uh, yeah. Now we can move on what we want. This is like just like I don't know, right? Checking if the motors before like driving, checking if the motor working. Here we go. Now we want to interpret the posterior. Uh, so we have generated uh, basically 20,000 uh, uh, sets of every parameters. Uh, because like four, four times uh, five. Uh, we can use the, so this, this has been stored in a bike model object. And you can use the broom mixed package that will re that have a function tidy that re uh, return you like all the uh, the parameter you want with like an estimate which correspond to the medium standard errors then conflow and conf height which will be like the eighty percentage uh, interval credible uh, credible interval okay so you can if you want you can just use like the estimates. And you can uh, have like this posterior relationship, the, the posterior medium relationship. Yeah, you are just basically like using like, <laughs> it's like you, if you have done like the LM function in R, you probably have something like very similar to that. But uh, we are not only interested um, into like just summing up that, we, because like we want like more diversity of it, and, uh, and that's it. So uh, first thing, like you want to add because like the object, the bike model object, is an object. It's a very complicated object if you like try structure on it. It have a lot of. Uh, it's an object that have like very lot of attributes that's probably uh, are used by this function to display correctly. But also like uh, it's it's good to uh, you have like four different uh, mm, um, let's say vectors. That's it's not vector. It's matrices. Because here you have like um, uh, you have like okay you will have like beta zero or no it will be intercept term field and sigma you will have that time for uh, five time uh, four time for each uh, one time for each chain so you want to convert these four matrices into one data frame and as data frame will do that so instead of having four matrices uh, of um, five. I'm so bad with numbers in English. In five uh, thousand, you have like okay. twenty thousand data frame, yeah. and then you can just check like the first row and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, which gives you like every row is a validate option is a valid option of what could be um, the the relationship. 
then you can also use uh, add a uh, filter draw from tidyverse which is this one uh, this is like tidy bias uh, i should have added it here to make it clear so this will just draw random um draw draw around 50 of them and draw them so you can estimate it and the author like ask you like to do like more check how it works like try more like i will bring it the graphic here this is it so yeah. on 50 like but if you add like for example just a zero it would be like a bit more wider obviously but not that much so quiz do you think with what we we seen here like the this uh this uh summary um, of like the what's the uh, MCMCF produce, which is an approximate uh, of a posterior density function. And uh, do you think like of also like the graph that I show you, uh, there is a positive association between readership and temperature. Yes. Yes. Really. It, it, it's pretty wide, but yeah. um, basically the hotter it gets, it, there's going to be more riders. Oh, yeah, you're totally right. So let's click on that. So yes, you have, we had visual evidence when I showed you like this, we see like all, uh, there is no line that uh, have an, uh, a negative slope, but we just plotted 50. So it could be like different. Uh, also, if we check at the credible interval of 80% like here, like never these uh, parameters like uh, uh, go like below zero. It's always positive and it's go like from 75 to 88. And then uh, there is another nice trick that I like. You can just check on the, so the bike model def is like the 20,000, uh, yes, 20,000 uh, simulation you have produced. If one of them is, uh if one if like you can check if one of them below the row or like and basically like what you see like is all of them uh are like uh, there is no not anyone not zero percent of them that doesn't um uh, follow the rules okay finally you can also like play with it uh with add predicted draw from tidy bias i haven't sh i haven't done it here but i can show you it just like generate random uh, synthetic data from the distribution. So every one of it is like taking like, uh, here we just take four and we just generate random draw of it, which can be nice also if you want like, you know, uh, some visualization. Okay. Ta -da. No, no, like we have like, know that we know that uh, temperatures improved the number of ridership uh, and it's kind of we have like evidence uh, enough evidence to be convinced we can try uh, to do some prediction okay so suppose a weather report indicates that tomorrow will be like a 75 degrees day in dc what's your posterior guess of the number of riders for this company Oh, and all that, I mean, you don't need to give me a number, like, but just how yeah, are you going to do it? I might give it a go. What was it? It was about 2,600. Yeah. Uh, and let, let's, I'll just get the calculator out a second. Uh, I can go back if you want, yeah. Uh, so you will so, basically apply like that. Yeah. Uh, it's 78, uh, and the estimate is 82. Point two, so that's six thousand four hundred eleven point six minus off. Oh no, it's two thousand one hundred ninety four. I'm estimating yeah. four thousand two hundred seventeen point six. So how you how you rent point six of a bike? I don't know. Uh, the the point sixteen like here. Yeah, this is just you, you. You can just take like this is just because like here yeah, they they rounded it, but this is yeah. the correct number. The, the 82.2 is, in fact, 82.16. Just, mm -hmm. this is a rounded number. 
Well, my my estimate is about four thousand two hundred and eighteen. Give or okay. take. Okay, let's see. So I think it's a good estimate. See, you, you were close. Well, a million miles uh, out. I'm yeah, probably, I'm probably probably closer than the Bank of England with with their inflation target. With their yeah. <laughs> really wrong last year. Like I said, next year it's like thirteen percent, but it's not. It's going to be more. Uh, anyway. We don't we don't count inflation. Inflation doesn't exist. We are not like the price didn't increase. Uh, okay. Anyway, but this is a good way. It's one option, but it doesn't take into account the sampling variability and the posterior variability. Because this what we want is a one one. This is next one down there. It's not an average answer. This is what the average answer is. What provide you like that? So the pro the Posterior predictive model take into account that you, it will give us the all like if because like we are just like not like get, getting like the slope of it you know like we are not just getting like we are not only like getting this slope a number on this slope we are also like drawing a, a random number from the slope mm -hmm. from this distribution I don't know you, you see this is way more spread because we have like an effect of random sampling. The next day, we don't know it's independent. What will be the next temperature? Which I think is still a false assumption, but anyway. We have an overall show soups. Uh, so how we do that? This was also like discussed, like uh, I think it was br uh, uh, Brendan who talked about it last week. So uh, how do we like do that? Sampling viability and posterior viability, but they are not here, so they could have provided answer. So the good way of doing it is making doing the math. So you're like getting like all this whole huge integral to get the posterior predictive model. It's with M here, uh, but we do not have it. So what we can do is approximate this with the posterior predictive model of our 2000 set of parameters. 20, sorry, 20, uh, thousand set, yes, of parameters. And uh, then we will build a posterior predictive model. So in the book, they went slowly, but I think like you are strong enough so we can go directly with the tidy version. <laughs> so basically like uh, you are taking the, this all, all, all number of row and you will apply a muted function that will calculate a new value for every like uh, row that will take the intercept which is one of your column plus the temperature which is another uh another one of your column times the the all 55 degrees this is all like you will calculate the mu basically like what will you have calculated it but you have done it just for the medium one hmm. no we can do that for all of our data frames so it will have like way more variability and we will take into account way more this variability. And we have two possible variability. The sampling one, like what's my chance of if I'm, if the day, uh, the next day is not related to the day before of drawing whatever. And the posterior variability, which is like, uh, which is defined a bit later. So this is how we define the sampling variable. So we are basically like, we can define the sampling variability as in um, a random, so it's a new column, Y new, which will take to uh, this number of uh, L norm uh, distribution with two parameters, the mu, which will mu, which is defined like um, on every, on every uh, line, and SD, which is the sigma defined on every line. Like, uh, is it good? Maybe it's, uh, I should have like gone a bit slower on that. Uh, I should show it to uh, you like maybe it's better to go slow on that. So this is basically what you have. Yeah. And uh, you can just do like a mu for every line by that. Then if you want to just give you like uh, uh, the one parameter and what you want is y mu. So it's not new. So to go into um, Y new, you need to account the standard deviation here, which is the sigma that you get here. So you basically like get your mu from here 
and get your sigma from here. Is it better? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I should have added it. I think it was easier. So now you get a huge zeta frame, which uh, with every mu and y nu. So mu is like the average, like, you know, like the point on the slope, I will say. And the y nu is like a random sampling that's for like the other time model around the slope. Like if I, uh, if I, well, maybe I could draw something, I don't know. Is it good? Yeah, so like the mu is like the point. Yeah, like let me see like if I can draw something like expand here. I don't know, new convert. Oops. So basically, big, is it big enough? Like basically we have like this slope and every mu y or every mu have some variation. Is it, can it be big, bigger here? No, where is it? Well, anyway, did you see it better? Yeah. So every mu, I will pick a red color and try to make it bigger. No, I don't know. Uh, will be like, like that. This is the standard deviation for every mu y. And here, if you go here, we'll have another one. So we will basically draw into this distribution every time. Or every, every, every point of temperature here. This is temperature in Fahrenheit. And this is ridership. Uh, well, that's it. And every time, like in every temperature, you will draw. Uh, you can take the average, which is perfectly fine. Or you can uh, draw into it, into the, the data model. Is it better? I don't know. Yeah. This is how I represent it myself. <laughs> uh, comes okay. See, the paint on Linux is not as good as the paint on Windows. Uh, okay, so you have that this, so you can summarize it, like for example, and you can summarize it. So you just summarize classic dplyr function. Well, you will get the quantile of the per quant the, the quantile at uh, 0.25 and the quantile at 0.975. So the 90, 95% uh, interval, and you see mu is, is comprised yeah. between like, uh, so, uh, three, um, three, eight, four, three, thousand, eighty, four, eighty, and and four thousand basically. But you see, like the new uh, mu value, the, they are way more spread, because you know it can be you are you are just uh, with the the linear model, you are just averaging the 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 mu, and you want like the whole distribution of it. And everyone, if you average, if you average like the y mu, and you will probably get something the y mu. So if you average average the y, you probably get the mu. But uh, this is there are more spread because like you are just getting one specific for one day. Mu is the average in readership for seventy five degrees. We take all the average for seventy five degrees, but y mu is just for a specific day. So obviously it have more variability. So that means that we have more accuracy in predicting an average than a unique point. This is quite trouble. I mean, this is obvious, but not that easy to understand because like I think we have been fitted too much with the linear model. And we are just, don't remember like what we are just approximating with a linear model is usually just the average. So, but okay, so here we have done it like kind of the tidy way. So it's like, uh, we have just like mutates, but you can also use like uh, a posterior R stand RM of a function that do it. So I'm not showing this produce the same results. This is just like uh, quicker, but I, I like that, that it take the byte model. It does not take the bike model convert as data frame. Uh, this is why like, this is one piece of advice that's 
like because like the author uses a lot of different package, the inputs and inputs are not always the same, even if you are doing yeah. same stuff. So you have to be careful. I have like repeated it, but yeah. Okay. So um, that's it. So now you can like uh, have like your, um, you have all of that that can be like, give you like the estimation. Just you are not limited only with the average. You can uh, get way more, um, way more variability. Okay. On your estimate. We can do that. We can do all this analysis uh, in sequences. Let's say like we get uh, our data, like uh, we get the data every day, like the first month, then the second month. Mm -hmm. You can uh, obviously do it and add it every time. Like this was like one of the stuff, like I just copy pasted something like for bias tools. Uh, the, 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 so this is like, I think one of the big strengths of uh, Bayesian uh, modeling. So you can just like uh, analyze it this way. So you just like use like the tool we have seen in previous way and just plug it. In. Okay, I'm using default R stan RM prior. Before, when we tuned our prior, this was here. I know it was a longer. <laughs> we used it like previous knowledge to set it up here. R stan RM offer you uh, a way of doing it differently. This is like, so this was the same function that we already used, stan GLM from this package. Uh, that's uh, defined that like we already discussed that. Uh, but here you can add on normal, every like on prior here, the auto scale true. Uh, if you said this true, even like see the, the standard deviation is way different than the one we pick it. I go back to the uh, turning prior. We have set up like yeah, one, ta yeah. one uh, uh, thousand, see? Uh, and the package will be able to set, adjust it for you. <laughs> Don't ask me all, and the author didn't explain. So after it will need to run the simulation also. This this will obviously like run you like simulation. So I the author didn't display like the you know like the fuzzy mustache plot. We'd we'll be curious to see if the fuzzy mustache is the same, the trace plot and all the parameter like that. And at the end, the other other part like the chain, the, the chain, the iteration, they're all the same. At the end, you can call uh, also like from uh, it, they have a prior summary function, which we called on the new um, model you have called. The, this is a new model like, uh, and it will give you like the difference. So what you said was like 2.5. I think uh, this is closer than that. Be careful, this is a scale. And scale is not standard deviation. I don't remember the correct equation, but I think it's not. But it gives you like, it adjusted you. And it was uh, very strong uh, in adjusting it. To do that, um, to do that, uh, they use the scale of the data. So it used the data that you provide here, this, and but just use the scale of it to set up the prior. So the author said it's, uh, it's, it, they recommend it to use it. I think it's good when you are beginning and setting, uh, you know, like, uh, yeah, they make it soon easy, but I don't think it's easy, at least for me. So it's good, like, you can try to set it up and then uh, use the, um, uh, Use this auto auto scale parameters on the normal or exponent. See on every distribution you can setting up, uh, and it will it will it will calculate it. See here we are kind of close, like the 0.00. It was it was more or less close, uh, and that's it. They recommended I, I put it at the end of the chapter. Also they recommended to read like I apparently. The Airstan RM have nice vignettes. I haven't read, go through them, but they help you understand how it works. So here also I have displayed uh, side by side the two prior. So this was, was the prior we set up at the beginning of the chapters. 
And this is the one with the default one. So the one where we set up, like we kind of infer, like this is what was saying like here, let's say. This was it, like for every one degree, we have an increase. So we do not have decrease. This, is, this was like setting up uh, by like prior knowledge. Mm -hmm. But if you use uh, Airstan Air Prior, well, here, yeah, they can assume like maybe we have decreased. So it's split up uh, you, or it can be flat, which wasn't the case of the prior we, we set it up. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Yeah. So the author said it's not done. We need to evaluate the model now. And this will be next chapter 10 with uh, Frederica. So Frederica, uh, be ready. <laughs> they said at the end, they said at the end of chapter nine, it's kind of like, don't use this without reading chapter 10 yeah, first. Chapter 10. <laughs> because it's dangerous. It's you, you, got, you got to look at chapter 10 as well. Okay, so imagine we, it's kind of a lot of work. So what we learn, build a simple Bayesian normal regression with response and Quanti uh, and predictor quantitatives should be an S. And we move it from global mean to local mean, which before, like all the previous example where we build our, our knowledge was all on like, uh, you know, one just one average. And now we are like going like more because we added this linear model, we can, we can specify it uh, with another new parameter, the predictor, and see how our global mean fluctuates with the local mean, uh, depending of the predictors. Okay, so I try to sum up what we have seen also like today. I wanted to do a nice diagram, but I failed. So this is just a ugly list. Uh, the first is like we build models. We started with a data model, and then we build prior models for the data models. Then uh, on the prior model, we tuned the we tuned that as there was prior information, or using like the Erstan RM stand. It's not. I think it's stand point GLM or, uh, or with the auto scaling gal true. It's not on the. It's not an argument. Of, it's an argument of the some function inside of the stand GML, and we also use it like the prior summary at one time. So like this was like this um, uh, this function here. Uh, but we, we haven't, we have not done it. Uh, like if you read the chapter, it came way later, but I have put it here. Like, so we, because this is supposed to be around here. Okay. So the posterior simulation, after the posterior simulation, what we have done first, we run the simulation as are you use the S10 RM or you use the S10 one. I've shown you like the different way of doing it. Then you need to check the simulation. To check the uh, effective ratio, this is in bias plots. Mm -hmm. To check the air at, this is in air stan. And to do the plot, they are in bias plots. This is why like, I wanted to summarize it a bit because like, we are calling a lot of different package. And I think it's good like, to visualize, visualize a bit. Mm -hmm. Then we are, doing, uh, we are interpreting the posterior. First, we use the broom mixed tidy. Which is also used like uh, we can, which I think it's a very nice package, the broom package uh, for like classical uh, generalized, generalized uh, linear model. It's not only for like um, this kind of model. And then we use the tidy bias as a hard fitted draw or hard predicted draw. Fitted draw was like just like to see one of our uh, one of the set of the parameters we have produced with the why new uh, um, uh, generated data, and this was just a predicted uh, version of it. And then we have done predictor uh, posterior prediction as a by hand by using like deep layer muted and summarized function, or we use it the Erstan RM posterior predict and the Erstan tool posterior interval. Who? That's it. And on resource, I added like the link. Oh, no, the link is bad. I probably copy pasted uh, something wrong. So this is this provide you like I will change also. This is the vignettes of Airstan RM. Okay, so I will stop sharing my screen and see if you are live. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm so lucky. Yeah. But uh, Frederica ran away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she did say, she did put, put in the chat that she. Uh, yeah, well, I didn't see. Up. Okay. So I should have said bye to her. Uh, yeah, it was, it, it's, it's a huge chapter, I feel. And just having like the whole workflow is a lot. I don't know how you feel about yeah. it. Thanks for staying with me. Like you could have lived. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it's a, um, I first did regression probably about 20 years ago now. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, this, this is definitely more complicated, but I think it's probably actually better because all of the assumptions and stuff, like yeah. it's, it's got to be normal and you've got to wash out for multicollinearity and heteroscedacity and stuff in the, in the data and stuff. Like no one ever paid any attention to that. <laughs> yeah. you, you've got intercept, you've got a slope. We'll make, it, we'll make a prediction like that. <laughs> yeah, which obviously would be like an overfitting. Mm. This will be like, this will overfit because like you will be like, yeah. But so I think, yes, the, the idea, it, it's a long way, I think, uh, to produce all this. Imagine we are just basically like typing LM and, <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. yeah, you have to check all the assumption, everything. And, uh, but yeah, there, I think also we didn't, you weren't here like when Brendan presented it. I think uh, because we have all the posterior density function, we basically have all the what can what all the values that can range. Well, at least we have an approximated version of that. It's not just an average. So uh, I think, like for example, like events if an event have low probability, you are like um like, but it can have a lot of financial impact. You know, you can just plug this approximate density. Uh, you can just plug like this approximation of the density with another function that uh, map them with the average of cost. Like, obviously, like, you know, let's say like, we have not that much sense of getting like a pandemic. You know, the, 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 the chance yeah. of having a pandemic is very low. <laughs> 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 but what does cost us if we had one? Yeah. Well, and then so they, they were saying exactly the same thing about China invading Taiwan. Not very likely, but if it does happen, it's going to be pretty bad. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, can, it, will, yeah. <laughs> it will be problematic. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, that's it. So I, I, will, I, will, I will correct the few errors I have seen and send a pull request to, um, to Jan. So it will be on the GitHub repo, all what I have, I have shown. And uh, so I'm going to have a, this weekend, because it's the last weekend of my leave. Um, I'm going to have a go, certainly at one, maybe two of the presentation. Because I'm not doing, I'm not doing the presentation next week, am I? It's, it's like it's no, like, next week is Frederica. <laughs> she said yes. <laughs> I heard it as well. <laughs> so yeah, next week is good. Uh, but yeah, uh, you. I think you are the week after. Yeah, I think I'm the week after. I'm going to be try. Fingers crossed. Touch wood. I'm going to be a little bit organised. I, I hopefully I should get a little bit ahead. I think it's a huge one. Uh, I think it's very, very huge one. Uh, yeah, you are basically doing like the first, um, no, you are doing uh, extending the normal regression model, yeah. which probably is way more complicated. Well, I haven't read it yet, so uh, I, shall, I, shall, I shall find out shortly. I, yeah, I yeah. know. I, I know. I wanted to do the uh, the Prasson one because I thought that'd be quite interesting as well. But that, but that's later on, I think. It's a big one. <laughs> I'm checking. <laughs> It'll be fine. But it's an interesting one. It'll They're all interesting, but yeah. Flashing. Anyway. Okay. Take care. Cheers, uh, Olivia. See you next week. Yeah, see you next week with Frederica. Bye and thanks for staying. <laughs>